Hello everyone, welcome to Cellular School. The topics we discuss in this video are understanding of some radio equipment and we will talk about radio wave propagation. Now let me help you in understanding what do you mean by a radio equipment. A radio equipment is any equipment where you will communicate through voice by or by sending certain messages. So the purpose of this radio equipment is to communicate. Consider a equipment like VHF, MF or HF. Okay, so you will have three different modes of usage in them. DAC, radio telephony, NBDP. DAC means digital selective calling, radio telephony and narrow band direct printing. So for these different users, they have a particular frequency for each purpose. Okay. For digital selective calling alert type of alerting in VHF, we use channel 70, which has a frequency of 156.525 megahertz. This alerting can be used for distress, urgency, safety purpose and can also be used as routine alerting purposes also. For radio telephony, where we use voice as means of communication, we have multiple frequencies available but channel 16 having a frequency of 156.8 MHz is used for distress urgency and safety and routine calling. So this is as per GMDSS regulations means this is required as per GMDSS regulation that channel 16 to be used for all these purposes. When the state or government laws or government of any country or any other special law until they don't apply, you are supposed to communicate. A marine communication should be done in VHF using channel 16 only. So the third is NBDP method. NBDP means narrow band direct printing. So just like in our mobile phones, we used to send SMS in the old mobile phones. In similar format in radio equipment, this is used for communication. VHF, there is no NBDP is there. In MF and HF, you can find NBDP. Usually, your MF and HF will be integrated as one system where you will be finding, it will be also having an attached keyboard to it. So, you can type the messages and send accordingly to your designated target. So, after the introduction of GMDSS convention only, various frequencies are established for maritime distress usage. Before this GMDSS convention, we already talked in our video part one. Okay. So now here you can see this table. Please note down all these frequencies. Each and every frequency must be known by heart because all these frequencies can be asked by an examiner at any moment. It is better that you by heart them and this will also be helpful for your written examination. Study and practice every day all these frequencies to master them. Now, when we are talking about different types of propagation of radio waves, the definition of propagation means it is the way in which a radio wave leaves the antenna and travels in space or air, water, ground, whichever medium it is possible. It travels through that medium and reaches to the receiver antenna. So this movement of radio wave in them, any medium is known as propagation. There are basically four types of wave propagation. They are ground wave propagation, space wave propagation, sky wave propagation and direct wave also known as line of sight propagation. In ground wave propagation, the radio waves leaving the transmitter travel near or along the ground or surface of the earth. So these are known as ground waves. Ground wave transmission is usually effective up to 400 nautical miles. Above 400 nautical miles means we are supposed to either increase the frequency of the transmission or power of transmission, whatever you will understand by that. In ground wave propagation, attenuation occurs. Now this term attenuation means as the uh, radio transmission occurs, the farther it keeps transmitting, there will be loss of transmission energy. So what happens is this loss of energy will also result in losing the message which you are transmitting sometimes. This loss of energy when 
the radio wave is propagating is known as attenuation. In layman terms, you can say attenuation means reduction in power of a transmitted radio wave as the surface of the earth absorbs the power of transmission. In order to increase the range of ground wave, we must increase the power of transmission of ground wave. So now we will look into space wave propagation. Some waves travel towards the sky and then pierces through the layers of atmosphere and escape into space. These are known as space waves propagation. There is something called critical angle in space wave propagation. This critical angle is very important factor for space wave propagation to occur. The waves will propagate through the space only when the radio waves reaches the layer of space and pierces it. So there will be a certain angle formed between the layer of the space and the, and the direction where the radio waves are being propagated outwardly. So this particular angle is known as a critical angle. Sky wave propagation. Sky wave propagation is where the radio wave after leaving the antenna travels up to the sky and reaches uh, till ionosphere and later it gets reflected back to earth. High frequency communication uses sky wave propagation. As you already know on board ship if, if you are using high frequency propagation you can uh, send signals up to 1200 nautical miles in some cases up to 1600 nautical miles depending on weather etc. So all these are possible and there is a small theory related to this sky wave propagation. So when you talk about high frequency transmission, there is something known as night time propagation. This is basically a theoretical part which should be applied in certain times when you are uh, sending a distress message or any other message at night time. So the clause of this night time propagation theory is that in daytime, our radio propagation will travel much lesser distance compared to nighttime propagation. What is the reason for this is, if you consider as we already talked right now, sky wave propagation means the radio wave will go from the antenna, reach till ionosphere and again it gets reflected back to surface of the earth. That's what we talked about, right? So what they are saying is this ionosphere is subdivided into four different layers known as D, E, F1 and F2. So this will be in these four layers by day F1 and F2 and as it becomes night time as it becomes night time this F1 and F2 will merge into one single layer. So when one from four to three layers transition this transition happens the layer of this ionosphere thickness reduces slightly you can say like that as this radio wave transmission which gets reflected at night time it is only affected by three layers of ionosphere by day time it is affected by four layers of ionosphere so since it is three layers of ionosphere there will be less attenuation also transmit further uh, distance so this is the theory of night time propagation Nighttime propagation if anyone asks means just tell them at night time waves will propagate more than the normal daytime propagation. So that's how uh, that's how we are considering it. On board practically if you are saying means we will not consider all these things because there are lot of different things which can affect whether or in your place whether in the reception point you are sending uh, like 1200 nautical miles you will not be knowing the weather how it is over there even if you know at the moment it is not considerable and so you will send by daytime propagation only this is what will happen in practical life as this surveyors will ask that's why we are talking about this nighttime propagation so we are coming to our fourth type of propagation which is known as line of sight propagation or direct wave propagation it is nothing huge it is just like you are talking in walkie talkie, another person is talking in walkie talkie, you will be in line of sight. The similar way, if you go to engine room, like bottom most steering platform and another guy goes to the foxhole and the ship is around 300-350 meters long, you will not receive the foxhole person what he is talking, you will not receive when you are in engine room. So what happens, there is all these different types of bulkheads metal bulkheads which will not let the signals to come so the line of sight will be broken down when you are directly very close or a bit closer you can say 
where the radio waves can reach you. So that time it is known as direct wave propagation or line of sight propagation. Guys, uh, now I am showing you a picture. Please uh, note this all this band and you can see the difference in the range coverage. Uh, different bands during day and night. This difference, some surveyors will ask. Propagation is basically a WPC. Surveyor only will concentrate on this. So these people are more into theoretical type. They will not see that much practicality. They will try to uh, bash you out in theory. So this nighttime propagation is a most common topic. You can say like important point to be noted. So guys, that's it for this video. In the upcoming video, what we will be doing is, we will talk about basic frequencies. This part, this number four part of the video, which will be titled as frequencies, is only for your last minute preparation. You should see all other videos before and after, whatever you might follow. But uh, these frequencies only for your last minute preparation, because some students will be confused between frequencies such as EPUB, SAT C, all these things. You can think it is foolish, but at the last moment, I've seen cadets uh, doing this thing, they'll get confused and they'll go and ask other people and they themselves will confuse some other people. So all this miscollaborations will happen at last moment. So for your last moment preparation, not like last moment where you are uh, being outside the examiner, not that time. Last moment preparation means the day or night before. For that, I am making very only sharp notes related to only frequencies. If you see this frequencies uh, video, you will be like thoroughly, uh, you will be thoroughly like able to buy heart all these things. Then you are uh, good for the uh, frequency part. So I will be making that as my fourth video. Thank you so much for your support. And I have been seeing recently like some of my videos are getting good views. Compared to others, I am not like a master in making videos, I am still learning a lot of stuff. So, uh, thank you all for all of your love and uh, please, if you really like the content which I am posting, make sure that you will subscribe to my channel and have a good day guys.